Thank you, Amanda, and good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, so just about a year ago, we introduced uh, Trent Balke as our director of player personnel. And, uh, you know, if you just take a one look at uh, Trent's background, you knew why it was so evident that we'd welcome him to the Jaguars. And in late November, uh, I announced that Trent would be serving as our interim GM through the balance of the season. And today it's my honor to share the news that the interim tag is no more and that Trent is now officially the general manager of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's a lot of announcements in less than a year, but it speaks to the quality of Trent Balky. Again, I mean, you can Google him, you can see what Trent's done in football and especially his track record as a GM in the NFL. Um, I know that we have the right man to work directly with our head coach, Urban Meyer, and our mission to win in Jacksonville. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce the new general manager of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trent Balky. Trent? First of all, Shad, I'd, I'd like to thank Shad and Tony for this opportunity. Uh, it's an opportunity that you never knew, I never knew would come again. Uh, you, not many people get a second chance, but more importantly, the opportunity to work with somebody that I've really grown to respect and trust over the past couple of weeks and we'll build on from there and Coach Meyer. Uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be here. Uh, I know there's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done but I'm also extremely confident that we can build an organization together that the city of Jacksonville and the Jacksonville faithful will be proud of for years to come. Thank you, Trent. We're going to go ahead and get started with Hayes from 1010XL. Hey, Shad, congratulations. What was that like, the November 29th and beyond working with Trent? What were some real specifics that you took away from that relationship? Well, um, you know, Hayes, uh, I think the experience uh, and, uh, you know, his insight on to really what we thought uh, we were doing and really what we had accomplished. So it was a fresh set of eyes uh, with a huge amount of experience, uh, obviously, you know, in the NFL. Great. And then Trent, congratulations. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, what do you feel like are the biggest things you've learned from your tenure in San Francisco? I think you learn, you learn everywhere you, at every stop. Uh, I think uh, you learn from the, the mistakes you make. Probably you learn more from the mistakes you've made over your career than you do the, the positive things. But uh, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about handling, dealing and, and working with coaches, a lot about dealing and working with players, a lot about the team building and what it takes uh, in, in spending the last a lot of time with coach Meyer in the past couple of weeks have learned a tremendous amount. I think, I think life's a journey. I think learning's a journey. And I think uh, every day you wake up, if you're not waking up with the mentality that you're going to learn something, you're missing something. So I'm just looking forward to uh, where we're currently at and where, where I know we can go. And Urban, how important was Trent's input in terms of being here and knowing the roster and those conversations that you had with him? Well, I didn't really look at that. I looked at the, as we move forward, you know, obviously uh, uh, I didn't know Trent. Uh, we met years ago, but to say I knew him, I didn't know him. And, you know, I've been very fortunate in my entire head coaching career. I've always looked at everything that I've done as a partnership, whether it be athletic directors, whether it be just people we work with. And, uh, as Trent said, I mean, there's, I can't imagine spending more time with someone in the last uh, uh, few days than I did really the last couple, last week or so uh, than Trent. I'm really impressed. And uh, uh, the alignment is going to be a big word that uh, I know our owner, Shad, is going to use and, and Trent and myself. And it's going to be a partnership and we're going to be aligned. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Hayes. All right. Let's go over to Gene Fernet with the Florida Times Union. Hey, Trent, uh, congratulations. Uh, could you talk a little bit during your, th your three years where you were serving as a consultant uh, with the NFL, 
Uh, were you uh, pretty antsy about trying to get back into the personnel game with, with, a, with a team? Or were you kind of like uh, just waiting for the right opportunity to come along? You know, gee, that's a good question. Gee, I, I've never forced uh, my way into any position in terms of thinking I had to do this or I had to do that. I was very comfortable in what I was doing. So I wasn't chasing just any opportunity. Uh, when Jacksonville called, I had, a, I had a very good relationship with Dave Caldwell. Uh, we started as area scouts on the West Coast years and years ago uh, is where we first met. Uh, he presented the opportunity along with ownership to come down and be a part of this organization. And it was, it was the right opportunity at the right time for me. And uh, uh, I, again, it was a, you're always looking for the right fit. You know, I've been in this business for a long time and I think the fit is the critical aspect and something that has to be there uh, for you to have any success. You know, in this league, there's 32 teams, and I honestly believe uh, 26 to 28 of them beat themselves before they ever get hit the field for different for various reasons. And I've been a part of them. Uh, I, I know this: we share a vision here between ownership, between the head coach, myself, that I think we're we're, we're very focused in on, and uh, I'm I'm just glad to be a part of it. Can you tell us if Tom Gamble will be reuniting with you here in Jacksonville? Absolutely. Uh, Tom is already down here on staff and working. Uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We got free agency. We got a draft. We got a situation in the NFL that's going to be historic with the cap going down for the first time. There's a lot of things we need to work through, and uh, I'm confident in the group we have, and we're going to push forward with that group. Will he be your uh, the director of, of player personnel or pro personnel? What will, what will be his title? He, right now, he's just in within the, the, the department, uh, the title thing. And I've never been a big title guy. We'll figure all of that out. I think the key is the value he brings to this organization, the value he brings to, to myself in knowing Tom and working alongside him as long as I have. I trust him. I respect him. And I'm just looking forward to working with him again. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. All right, let's go over to John Reed with the Florida Times Union. John, are you there? Um, Trent, can, can you just talk a little bit about how you are as a different GM from when you were in San Francisco and how you are different as a person? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a that's a loaded question. I'm not sure how to answer that. Uh, different. I think I've grown. I've grown in a lot of ways. Uh, when you're out of the business, you get to look at the business through a different lens. When you're in it, you you, you don't have that luxury. Things are happening a lot quicker. You got to make a lot quicker decisions. Uh, this business is is a difficult business. You're not always going to be right. You're not always going to be popular. Uh, which is which I'm totally co comfortable with, um, but I again I think you you grow with every experience, uh, and I grew I think more from being outside of this business looking in than I ever grew inside of this business. And follow up, how much do you think it helped you to be here for a year to see that roster, know what the strengths, the weaknesses, what do you need to add? and um, to, to provide some input to, to, to Coach Meyer on, on those type of roster decisions? I, th I think it certainly helps, but at the same time, you know, and I think Coach said it and, and Shad certainly said it, it, it's a partnership. So it does, if you're not aligned and you don't think the same and you don't have the same vision, I think regardless of whether you've been here or not been here, you're going to run into problems. The thing that I am very confident in is Coach Meyer and the, the vision he brings to this organization, as well as ownership. Uh, and I think the, the results will speak for themselves. But we have a lot of work ahead of us. Thank you. Thanks, John. We're going to go to Mia O'Brien with First Coast News. Hi, Trent. Pleasure to meet you. I'm just curious. Obviously, you've worked with Jim Harbaugh. You've worked with Chip Kelly, guys that came from college to the pros. What is that transition like, and how can you help Coach Meyer in that transition? 
Well, first of all, I think Coach Meyer is very aware of, of uh, all the things that the, the differences between the two games. But at the same time, uh, working with them uh, and understanding how they, how they came into the league and, and the things that they struggled with, uh, I'm a resource for Coach. That's what, the way I look at it. I provide a service where he can come in, he can bounce things off of me. Uh, quite there because there's going to be a lot of questions there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be first time for him but uh, in the short time I've been with him the one thing I realized he's a quick study it's not going to take him long to figure the rules out and everything that goes with it and he's certainly uh, as a coach uh, you know he, he knows his way around the, the practice field very well and then, Urban, for you, what was your knowledge of Trent's time in San Francisco and any previous relationship you two may have had? Yeah, I've talked to some people that worked with Trent before, and uh, I met him first, I mean, as many, many years ago when Alex was drafted at the 49ers. Uh, but really, my experience with Trent has been of recent. And, you know, I, I'm a fairly good judge of uh, – I, I like blue-collar people. I like people that – you know, our conversations, obviously, you know, we got to know each other about our families and other important things, but we're right to work. You know, we got a job to do for a great owner, and it's a big job. It's a job that's going to take a lot of manpower. And so our, our work and relationship, I, you know, I, I can't imagine it being better than what we've gone through in the last, because we're, I'm knee deep in hiring a coaching staff, and Trent has been, uh, I mean, he, we're, we're right there uh, going at it. So it's been fantastic so far. And I know, like, uh, obviously, you take over one in 15. You got the work ahead of us is uh, a tall task, but it's certainly one you can't do by yourself. So it's been great. Appreciate you both. Thank you. Thanks, Mia. We're going to go over to Mark Long with the Associated Press. Hey, guys. Uh, Trent, first off, Shad used the phrase fresh set of eyes last getting you in here last year. What did you determine in your year on the job that needed to be changed and some of the things maybe you're going to change moving forward and maybe even specifically about contracts based on, you know, some guys who have already been let go? Well, again, we're still in the process of evaluating that. The, the, whenever you have a changeover, uh, first thing is to get the new staff in place. The new staff will come in. We'll sit down. We have a process that we'll go through. We'll evaluate our roster. We'll evaluate those that are free agents on our roster, and we'll make decisions from there. So right now, we're just in the building process. We get everybody in place. We'll start to go to work on the roster and start looking forward to free agency, the draft, and all the other ways you can acquire talent. Because this, let's face it, this is a talent acquisition business, and and. Uh, I don't, I don't, regardless of whether it's players or coaches or anybody else in the building, your, your goal is to qu acquire the best talent. And that's where we're at right now. And we'll take it from there. And on the coaching front, uh, did you release everybody, whether this is for Trent or urban, did you release all the coaches to go find other jobs? Are they all free right now? I'll leave, I'll leave that to coach. Yeah. Next week. I'd like to, we'll, we'll, give a deep dive into what's taken place because there's been no finality uh, to where we're at as a coaching staff. So I'd like to hold on that till next week because there's been nothing set in stone yet. All right. Thanks, Mark. We're going to go over to Mike Duraco with ESPN. Uh, Trent, how easy, or how much easier is it when you know that you have that number one pick um, in terms of just doing the evaluation process that you just spoke about before with, with your guys and, and then just preparing for the draft? Uh, easy. I don't, I don't know that that word exists in the National Football League. So it certainly puts you in the driver's seat, but uh, there are no easy decisions in the National Football League. And you, you work through the process, you do the best job you can, and then you make the decision based on the knowledge that you've acquired. But easy. Is it, uh, oh, I was going to say, Urban, is it, you guys have pretty much already talked about the number one pick, I would assume, you two, in terms of who you guys would like? Or is that decision kind of already made in your heads, or is it still too wide open for you guys? Well, no, we've, uh, we've talked. Uh, that's, uh, that's a three month, two month. I think we all know there's a couple of incredible players out there, but that, that's, uh, the, my focus has been on the staff. But to say we haven't talked about it, of course we have. And, uh, 
you know, uh, we, we will, that's going to be a deep, deep dive. Thank you, DRock. We're going to go over to Jordan DeLugo with Generation Jaguar. Hey, Trent. Uh, in San Francisco, you didn't seem to spend a ton in free agency on big name, high price guys. I know the free agent uh, or salary cap situation was different over in San Fran. Do you envision trying to build through the draft more than free agency in 2020 and beyond in Jacksonville? I, I think the, the focus is always on the draft and building your team through the draft. I think you use the other avenues to supplement your roster uh, whether that's in big name free agents, uh, mid, mid, mid tier free agents or low end free. Agents. I think you're always searching to build your roster, whether it's from the top down or the bottom up or somewhere in the middle. Uh, your, your goal is to get the best 53 players you possibly can and go to work. But once that 53 is set, you're still working, you're still grinding, you're always trying to improve. And that's the, that's the philosophy we'll take. We'll do everything we can within the rules to build the best roster we possibly can. Awesome. Thanks, Trent. Thanks, Jordan. Let's go over to Cole Pepper with WJXT. Hi, Trent. Could uh, you give a, a guess a little bit of an idea about how you do approach uh, the draft and how you balance your best available with uh, needs, positional needs, uh, does one of those outweigh the other? I know you'd love to have both of them come together at once, but how do you weigh those two? Well, first of all, I think the draft is a, is a collaborative effort between everybody in the organization, uh, coaches, personnel, staff, ownership, everybody has to be aligned. So that's number one. And then once you, once you have the shared vision and you know exactly what you're looking for positionally, whether it be offense, defense, special teams, uh, then it's the philosophy of the, of the head coach and the coaching staff on how you're going to build that out. And uh, then you go into a room and you grind through the tape and you set the board, whether it's free agency or the draft. Uh, we're always going to we're always going to look at the value of a player uh, and value matters. Uh, it, it matters in in where in their value as to where you draft them, how much you pay them, how much you pay them in free agency. Uh, need, uh, we're, we're a value-based team, a need, not a needs-based. We, you always have needs, you know, regardless of when you set the 53. So the best player available is usually the direction you want to go, but yet you have to keep in mind the needs of the organization as well and the team. Urban, on that same point, are there positions that you feel you know, beyond quarterback are uh, is more essential positions than others to make sure you have, you know, star players, you have investment in those areas. Yeah. I apologize. I'm not uh, equipped to give that uh, conversation at some point. We will. I just been, it's been straight uh, this coaching staff. You know, I, I want guys in place by next week and then, and then we'll, we'll have an incredible conversation, but I'm just not prepared right now to talk about that. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks, Cole. We're going to have time for just two more, so we'll take John Shipley with the Maven, followed by Brent Martineau with Action News. Hey, uh, Trent. Coach said last week that, the, you know, the quarterback decision and ultimately who you guys pick to take, you know, be on your center will be one of the most important decisions of his lifetime. Just what, what would you say about the importance of that decision that's in front of you? Uh, couldn't have been better said. I mean, anytime you have the first pick in the draft and you're making a decision – uh, that's this impactful to, to the organization, uh, you got, there, there's challenges with that. So it's, it's an extremely important decision, and I'm looking forward to going through the process with coach and ownership to make that decision. Thank you. And then, uh, Coach, just how important uh, really was it for you to kind of, you know, find a, a partner in the front office you can align yourself with who had NFL experience just considering that you're making that transition? I think the answer is very obvious, but it's um, the chance of success is doesn't exist unless you have a partner that's completely aligned, just no chance. And that's, you know, I, I don't want to equate college to pro because it is a lot different, but I've always looked at a partnership with, with Gene Smith or Jeremy Foley. You know, it's obviously much different issues you got to deal with, but, and I've been lucky. I've never had an alignment issue in my coaching career. And I don't, I don't see that happening here. Thanks coach. Thanks, John. All right, let's finish up with Brent Martineau with Action News. 
Hi, this uh, question is for Shad. Uh, Shad, are you willing to share with us uh, if Trent and, and Coach Meyer are aligned contractually and how long that might be? Well, uh, they are aligned uh, contractually. How long that might be, I'm not ready to say, but it's a long time, okay? Uh, so, uh, but uh, I think uh, this was really, you know, very, very important to me. And, you know, we've spent a lot of time, obviously, Brent, uh, uh, on that uh, because, uh, you know, it's been, don't want to overstate it. It's a defining moment for the franchise. And also Trent uh, and maybe Coach Meyer can jump in on this too. Obviously, the number one pick is going to have a lot of discussion, but you have a bunch of picks in this draft upcoming. Do you guys know yet how you will – who will be the ultimate decision maker in that room if there's some differences or do you have to be perfectly aligned on, on who those picks are at 25 at 33 and everywhere down the line? I guess I can answer that and say that uh, uh, alignment one thing in shod shod's got a huge say in this as well. So I, any decision like this, I do look at it as a partnership and uh, uh, alignment is going to be the key and how you do that debate is healthy. Debate is strong. I encourage debate, whether it's when you're game planning or you're putting your roster recruiting, whatever you may, may be. So I don't know, Shot and I have had great conversation and so has Trent. So who will actually have it? I, I'm not that worried about that. I, I know that we are tied at a hip and, and uh, alignment's gonna be the key. And, and I think, uh, you know, to add to that, uh, you know, uh, this is, uh, you, you know, transparency, talk, communication well before the draft. Uh, you just can't be talking when, you know, you're on the clock. Uh, that's a little too late. So, uh, and that's a key lesson for me. The earlier, you, you know, you have them and you know where everybody, that's how you get the right decision for the organization. All right. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Trent. We appreciate your time today. Um, to all of our media, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.